We're given a problem where we're asked to find the k closest points to the origin. So the origin is the point at the center of this xy plane, also called a Cartesian plane. And so this is going to be the origin, which is 0, 0. Um, and we want to see what are the k closest points to the origin. Here we have four points here. We have a very small example. And we want to find the two closest points. Here k is 2. So we want to find this point, which how far is this point? It's a distance of 2. How far is this point from the origin? And we want to take the shortest path, which is a straight line. It's going to be, you know, this 1.414 quantity. We're going to look at how we calculate this. But the idea is we want the k closest points to the origin. We're given a set of n points. Uh, here in this case, n is 4. And so how are we going to start about this question? So first, we want to skim over detail. How is distance calculated? Now, this is just a detail. It's not the point of the problem. And you're going to see many problems where um, they're really similar to core problems we've already looked at, but there's like decorators on top of them. And this distance to an origin is actually just a decorator on top of a problem Problem we've already seen. And so this distance to the origin equation is something you would just probably be given. You're probably not expected to know it. Um, so you're going to take the x of point 0.1. So this is the x of point 0.1, x of point 0.2, 0.1.2. You have the y of point 0.1. We have the y of point 0.2. Point 0.2 is going to be the origin. It's going to be 0, 0. So it's going to be this guy right here. And then we want the distance to any of these given points. So this is point 0.1, or this is point 0.2. And then the point we're actually looking at is the point 0.1. So it's going to be x1. It's going to be x2. It's going to be y1. One, and then it's going to be y2. And then we have this equa equation here where we take the difference of this. If this is positive, squared is going to be positive. If this is a negative quantity, then, you know, negative times a negative is going to be positive. And so this quantity is going to have to be positive. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to take a square root of a negative here. And so we do the x minus the, the x differential squared, the y differential squared. We add those together and take the square root. So it's not the point of the problem as to why this is the case. We could go into why this is the case. But our second point is 0, 0. So the x2 and this y2, x2 and y2, is going to be 0 and 0 respectively. That's going to isolate this as x1. This is going to be y1, which is the point we're looking at, point 0.1. Um, and then we're just going to square them. And so we're given this simplified equation. So this is a function we're going to implement. Give me the point with its x and y. And this is going to give me the distance to the origin, right? And we would just be given this. So I kind of drew out how far each of these points are from the origin, given this kind of what we're doing in the chart here. And this minus 1 minus 1, uh, how far is it? You know, it's the closest point. How far is the 0 comma 2? So this is the x, this is the y coordinate. And so this is 0 and x and then up 2. So this is 2 away. It's fairly simple here. We can tell this is 5 away the 0 comma 5, and that would actually be 5 comma 0. So okay, we switch that to 5 comma 0, but it doesn't change the actual distance. So we're going 5 over, and then we have this minus 5 uh, minus 3. So we go back 5, down 3, um, and then it would be 5.83 in distance. And so this is the distance. So how are we going to go about finding a brute force to this problem? If you're enjoying this video, we have plenty more awesome data structure algorithm and system design explanations on interviewpen.com. You can ask us any questions you have about any kind of topics surrounding data structures and algorithms and system design. We release two to four videos a week. You can run your code. You can talk to a personalized AI teaching assistant. And yeah, the site's pretty great. Anyway, enjoy the video. Now, the most immediate thing I think is, what are we measuring? We're measuring the distance to the origin. And we're asked, what are the k closest items. So how can I convert these quantities into scalar quantities, into you know singular numbers that we can actually compare? And then I imagine we're going to have to do some comparison between these items. Another thing I'm thinking initially is what is the best we can do? Well, the best we can do for sure is going to be linear time. Uh, we're going to have to look at all of the points. So, you know, we're going to have to touch all these points. Unless I know something specific about these points initially, I'm going to have to look at all of these points because this last item might have the smallest point. This first item might be the smallest point. So we, we're lower bounded to linear time. But additionally, once, let's imagine, okay, I, I run a map function here where I map these points to their distance to the origin. So we take this point, turn it into a scalar quantity, running it through this function. What am I going to do with these numbers? I have to compare them somehow. Maybe I use a special structure. Maybe I do comparisons. Remember, comparison sorting algorithms are lower bounded to n log n. So as soon as I'm thinking of comparisons, I'm going to be thinking, okay, you know, maybe the best we can do might not be linear time. It might be n log n. So we're kind of going too deep down a rabbit hole here, but I, these are just the initial things I want you thinking as you're looking at this. So we're going to essentially do a map here. So we're going to go over each of these and we're going to run a function where we run the point through this distance function. And then we're going to come out with a single quantity. This is a comparable quantity. And so now what is the question? The question is, what are the k smallest of these scalars we have here, of these quantities? So we actually have reduced the problem 
right? And this is something you're going to see in computer science. It's called a reduction. Um, you're going to see reductions formally in proofs, but the idea of reducing a problem to another problem we already know how to solve is something you're going to see across computer science, especially in theoretical computer science and more advanced algorithms uh, like P equals NP and proving all those different problem spaces and such. But this reduces to a problem we already have solved. And I would encourage you to watch that video if you haven't. But the problem of finding the k smallest elements in an, in an array. And that is the problem that we're actually solving right now. And we already know how to solve it um, if you went through that video, but we're going to look at the specific code implementation. I think it's a good walkthrough to look at in this video. So if you give me these quantities, well, I can just do simple scans. I can just scan through this and say, hey, you want the k smallest items, the two smallest items? Let me scan and get the first smallest item. And then I could remove him, let me scan and get the second largest item and so on. So we can do repeated scans here. Um, and yeah, these are the two quantities that we want. And so as I was saying, we can either, you know, pluck the case small items with scans we can do repeated scans or you know we can look at all of these quantities how do i get the k smallest ones well this is not going to be guaranteed to be sorted these points won't be sorted in terms of their order from uh, or for origin distance so we can actually sort them and then we can pluck off the first k items so these are two immediate things i want you to be thinking now that we have these quantities that are comparable and so, uh, you know, we would think about the time complexity of the, each of these solutions, and we're going to look at that. Um, but let's kind of dive into these solutions and uh, walk through them. So pluck the k smallest items with scans. We use JavaScript, we use Java, we use Python across lessons, but irrespective of the language, the concepts are the same. So we're going to be given the points here. We're going to be given our integer quantity k. And then we're going to want to, we're going to want to preserve the point. So, you know, if you give me these points, if you give me these points, I'm not only going to want to remember the distance, I'm going to want to remember the actual point quantities, the x and the y of the points, because I have to return that later in the result. So we're going to map over these points, we're going to iterate through the points, and then we're going to grab the distance, and then we're going to grab the original point itself, and we're going to create a tuple of sorts. So this is just an object in JavaScript. In Python, you can have a tuple. Whatever you can do to have individual items that pair off the actual original point and the actual point's distance. Now we have an array of these rich objects. This map function transforms these original points into these rich objects with both of these data points. And then we're going to have the distance, distances array. And now we need to analyze this array. So remember, we can either do scans or we can sort. So we're going to see kind of how to do the sorting. So we're going to keep the results. This is the collection of the k closest points, which we return down there. And now we're going to collect k points. We're going to iterate from 0 all the way to uh, k, exclusive of k, since we're 0 indexing. And so the min item index, we're going to just say, all right, this is just going to be 0. We're going to assume that's the smallest item. And then we're going to loop over all of the entries in this distances array. And we're going to say, if the current entry I'm looking at, if that entry's distance is less than the minimum item, min item index, indexes distance from the origin, this is the new min item index. And we have the index j here. And so this is simply just saying, you you know, does this beat the smallest item I've seen? Um, and then at the end of this, we'll have the smallest item we've seen. We're going to add that to the result. So push is the same thing as add. Uh, this is just adding it to the result. The distances min item index quantity, uh, the original point. That's why we cached the original point. And so now we're going to remove that from this distances. We're going to remove it from the running. Um, so we would have plucked off this item. And now we're going to find the smallest item within these three guys, right? And so each of these are linear time operations. Their linear time operations, this outer loop is doing O of K work, right? And then at the end, we're going to have the full result we want. And then we saw the distance to the origin function, the square root of, you know, this point squared, uh, this point's X squared, Y squared. Uh, we add those together. So, so what's the time complexity? Well, we see O of K work outside. We see O of N work iterating over these distances initially. This is going to have N items. So, you know, we have a K times N time complexity uh, off the bat. And then we're creating a new array here with this map. I believe that would return a new in-memory array. And then this distances, uh, you know, would have linear space. Each of these entries would have a new rich object. And so perfect. This is the scan approach, and this solves the problem. But can we do better than k times n? Uh, you know, k could be, what's the worst k can be? k could be n. Uh, what if I wanted all of the items, right? So really, we have an n squared algorithm. And remember, the best we can do is, uh, you know, linear time, or we thought that's the best. The best we could do is n log n, probably, or n log some quantity. I would imagine that's the case, right? 
And so we can do better. We know we can. Um, so we're going to look at the other approach to uh, kind of brute force, sorting and plucking the K front items. And so, you know, we're going to do exactly what we did before, create our tuple with the points and distance, and then we're going to sort. We're going to sort by the distance. And now we're going to have everything sorted out. And then, so let me bring the array back. Okay, so this is essentially what would be we would be working with. We're going to have this sorted sequence, and then we're going to grab off the first K items. And this is the answer that we want. Um, so we're going to just do a slice from zero to K. Let's imagine K is two. We have index zero, one, two, three. Remember, we're exclusive on the right bound. And so we're going to only grab the zero and the one. This two doesn't get considered. We're exclusive on the right bound. But these are the rich entries, the rich entries that we annotated. So we're going to have to do a map function again uh, to grab the original points. So we transform. Uh, it would just be this array of the rich entries. We're going to just grab this item and this item. And then that's the result that we return. And so what does this cost us? It's going to be n log n right? Going to be n log n. That's going to be the time. And in terms of the space, we also have this map here. Uh, you know, that's going to create a linear amount for this annotated internal structure we're keeping. So, okay, we started with a solution that was like n squared, and then we got to n log n. You know, can we do better? Um, and the question would become is, can we use a special structure to make comparisons fast? And I think we can. And why can we do that? We know that we can use a heap for mins and maxes. So if you go to the heap section, our heap fundamentals, you can kind of look at the uh, heap data structure, which allows us to find mins and maxes very quickly. And, and it's going to be logarithmic with respect to the size of the heap. And again, we cover all of this in detail. And so the idea is we want to keep the k smallest items and we want to eliminate the k n minus k largest items. So if there's n is four, k is two, you know, the four minus two, we want to, the two largest items, we want to get rid of them. We want to keep the, you know, k smallest items. And so we can use a min or max max heap. But the question is, which is better? If we want the case smallest items, our immediate intuition is say, let's use a min heap. Let's use a min heap. Let's throw in all of the items and let's eject k times. Now, this is going to be a heap of size n. Ejections and insertions are going to be log n. So it's going to be log logarithmic with respect to a heap of size n, right? So, you know, this heap, if it's a binary heap, is going to, you know, kind of be a logarithmic, right? And so um, we, we would be taking n entries in inserting them into a heap of size n, uh, and each insertion would be logarithmic. So it's, you know, n entries times logarithmic insertion, and then we're going to do k ejections at the end. So we, you know, we would do k times uh, log n, right? Uh, each, we would do k ejections, each taking log n time, um, and so on. So, you know, we would be bounded to n log n since n is going to be larger than k most of the time. So we could do the min heap, but we've also seen we can use a max heap. And what we're trying to do is we're seeing the other side of the equation. We're eliminating n minus k items. So how do I eliminate the largest items? At the end of it, I just want the k smallest items. So we could keep a heap of size k, and then we can eject large items when the heap hits a size of k plus one. Um, and that's going to allow us to, by the end of it, we would have a heap of size k, um, and the largest items would not be considered, so we would eject the largest items, and by a process of elimination, we would have the k smallest items. How does this improve us? Well, since k is going to be smaller than n most of the time, we're dealing with a k-sized heap. So it's the same dynamics we saw with the min heap, except we now have a k-sized heap, right? And it's going to be logarithmic with respect to k. And we're still doing that n times. We're doing, you know, these n iterations over n points, but the heap is size k. So, you know, we would be n log k now. So we're going to do this max heap approach. And so we're going to be switching to Java for this because we already have a inbuilt priority queue data type, or we could use a special library in JavaScript. I think it's fine for us to switch things up. And so we're going to create a max heap here. Um, and we're going to have each entry is going to be an integer item, which is the points, the x, y point. And we need to pass a special compare function. By default, the priority queue uh, abstraction is going to be a min heap. So we need to pass a special compare function doing the distance of P2 uh, minus the distance of P1. So when we're comparing, this is going to turn us into a max heap. And so this is something you would just fiddle with or just, you know, it's something you would just search, uh, Google, Google it or something. And then we're going to loop over the points. We're going to go over every single one of these points. We're going to add it to the heap. And then once we are greater than K, when we have K plus one items, we're going to remove the largest items since it's a max heap. That process of elimination 
is going to eliminate the n minus k largest items. And by the time we're finished, we have the k smallest items. And then the result, we're just going to create this result array of k entries. Each of them have two, uh, you know, we have an x and a y, you know, and there's going to be, there's going to be k entries. And then we're going to eject from this heap. We're going to pull from the heap and we're going to write to the result array. And then we're going to, you know, decrement before we do the write. This is just an indexing thing. And then we're going to return the result. And then that's it. So this is the heap approach. You know, whether you're using Python, JavaScript, you would probably you would be handed a built-in structure the point of the problem is not to implement a heap it's to just solve the problem and so what would the time complexity be well it would be n log k because our heap is size k inserts take logarithmic time with respect to k removals take logarithmic time with respect to k so removals log k how many times while loop k of k times so that's uh, you know, this is, so this loop itself, you know, we're doing K ejections, each takes log K time, right? So that's just looking at this loop right here. And then if we look outside, you know, we're doing N times, we're doing a log K insertion, right? So that's what's going on down here, down here. Um, and then we have the initial heap creation. So that's where the time complexity comes from. And notice how this was K log K. This is going to be dominated by N log K because N is going to be greater than K most of the time. And then in terms of space, this is a K size heap. And so it's a simple as that and we won't count the result output but you know that that would be size n but this would be o of k uh, with respect to the heap size so okay we've looked at the heap approach we've looked at the approach of just mapping the items and you know either sorting and then plucking off items or doing repeated scans and so the key thing i want you to take away from all of this is this is a reduction that we just did we reduced this problem to a the a problem we already know how to solve the k smallest elements in an array and you're going to see this many times keep an eye out for problems that have all these fancy words these fancy decorators but there are already problems that are simply uh, bare bones we know how to solve them already so this is the problem of k closest points to the origin if you enjoyed that video you can get a lot more content just like this on interviewpen.com we publish two to four videos a week really it's just an arbitrary number it's whenever i can sit down and do a video because these videos take a whole day to do and we're always online to answer any questions you may have Join our Discord, join our newsletter, The Blueprint, where you can get more weekly data structure and algorithm and system design kind of topics. And subscribe and like this video if you actually like this video and it helped you. And also tell a friend that we exist. That's all.